for live. Hi, Mahalakshmi. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Wonderful. We're here at the Shivananda Yoga Farm in Grass Valley, and you just completed an awesome cooking class. Tell me about the Ayurvedic cooking that you did today for the good. Thank you very much. I and, and appreciate it's, it. <laughs> and it's the good and it's the good karma diet, correct? Correct. Yeah. Tell me, it was a Middle Eastern. I had the I had the pleasure of sitting in on your class. Tell me about what you cooked and how you integrated these very important Ayurvedic principles into your class. Well, very good. Thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah. So, what, what did you What did you cook today? Thank you. So today we made tagine, which is a style of a pot. It's a Mediterranean or a Moroccan dish, and it's simmered vegetable with harissa. Harissa is the driving spice, okay. and it's perfect for the winter as it's 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 well cooked, right? So the vegetables are for a long period stewed with a, a beautiful tomato sauce, harissa being the driving spice. And, and then we also uh, add in uh, garbanzo beans or chickpeas, which beautiful. give it that thickness. And harissa is, um, it, uh, harissa, harissa is a beautiful spice that um, I think you mentioned that it's spicy, but not overly, uh, it's heating to the body, which is great in the winter time but it's not yeah. going to be over the top in terms of spicy. And it's a spice yeah, blend. Yeah, Ayurveda talks of spice. Ayurveda yeah. spices things. But sometimes we can think, oh, it's spicy. It must be hot to the palate. But really what we're doing is digestive spices. Spices that, that inspire the digestion or spark the agni, the fire in the digestion. So it's not so much the spice on the palate. It's what it happens as it activates different areas in the body for digestion. So in Ayurveda, you're thinking about spices a little differently. You're thinking about both the pre pre digestion and just post digestion, uh, in terms of the impact Correct. on the body. That's wonderful. Correct. So we started the the meal today with a very uh, citrus forward warm salad, right? With roasted carrots, cumin. So we were preparing the body to eat, right? So we started on the palate with a very acidic, a very uh, forward in, in, uh, in lemon and orange. So, this so that was, the body to prepare. So that combination of foods is uh, stimulating to the appetite mm -hmm. and preparing for the hot meal that's to follow? Correct, for the warm meal, correct. And I know in the salad, you actually had, you know, uh, Ayurveda relies primarily on cooked foods, but you, and you had some components that were marinated and cooked in the salad. And you, mm -hmm. I think you indicated that's a way to, um, and especially in the winter time, to help with digestion. With absolutely, salads. yeah, you're so true. So it's the warm roasted carrot, and we marinate the carrot in olive oil and spices. Roast it with the citrus, right? So you roast a lemon, you roast an orange. So you have that warming citrus, and you you can actually feel it as we're talking. If you talk about lemons, the back of the palate's opening, and you're beginning to. Say I'm a little hungry. So that's what inspires for the body. So a good sure. healthy appetite is important to Ayurveda. Excellent. And you also made, I believe, I, I can't believe you did all of this in less than an hour, but you also made homemade pita bread. Mm -hmm. um, and you indicated that you wanted to combine both half and half wheat flour and white flour. Is there a reason Correct. for that? Is, it, is there a reason for that ratio? No, 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 it's just, you want that grainy texture. So when you have a pita and you're filling up whatever falafel, or in our case, we were dipping it into tajin, you want a little bit of a coarseness to it, right? You don't want a brioche where it's fluffy and eggy. Sure. You want a little bit of substantial to go ahead and get that beautiful, uh, beautiful pan juices from the roasted vegetables. Sure. I assume that the word the word that comes to mind is earthy. You want it, You want the bread to feel to have an earthy feel to it. Mm -hmm. So that's kapha dosha, right? So the dosha, if you're talking in kapha, is earth kapha, right? So it, it combines the the soil with water, and this is kapha. It's the building block. So it's the same way for the food, right? We want the food to be a building block in the body. So we we nurture the food. Excellent. And when you made the couscous, you added hot vegetable stock to the couscous and then, then let it sit for 15 minutes. Is there, uh, is that the typical way that you would prepare couscous or is that an Ayurvedic principle there? 
mean, I wouldn't say it's an Ayurvedic principle, but couscous is a light grain that has a little bit of protein and it can be uh, integrated well with the tagine. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a lighter grain it's for a heavier stew. Sure. So we want to try to inspire all the doshas. So we have a vata a little bit with the salad and then she's warmed down, right? We have a little bit of spice that'll help modulate and then we bring it very grounded. So the stews are very grounded. That's wonderful. And I, you also uh, gave, you gave your class participants the option of adding chickpeas to the tagine or not. Um, and you talked about protein and, and it's more challenging to digest from an Ayurvedic perspective. Uh, especially if they were, if, if were going to sub out the grain for a high protein grain like quinoa. Could you, could you add a little bit on that? Sure. So sometimes when we're in the evening meal, right, the, the lower stage of the digestion, it's also a time that you don't necessarily want to spend in heavy digestion. In Ayurveda, we choose to eat the bigger meal or the larger meal between 10 and 2. So, so this meal is just to kind of wind down. So it doesn't necessarily have to have 16 grams of protein, right? We don't have to go into the nutritional breakdown of things. Know that it takes more to digest chickpea. So if you choose to have a grain that has the lightness of protein and you're still getting your protein, then you don't need to protein overload. You don't need to have protein in every dish. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so in the evening, I would serve the tagine with no, uh, no chickpea. Okay, so for, for easier digestion. Any other Ayurvedic tips for wintertime eating? I get tips for winter time eating. Warm liquids. So warm, warm and, and liquid. Warm liquids, definitely. Okay. And warm and remember to eat during the correct times for, for your dosha. And remember to learn a bit little bit because Ayurveda is not one size fits all. So my my tajin wouldn't necessarily be good for a vata imbalance, right? So sure. you want to, to eat towards what's in not in balance. Of so course. just try to study a little bit more in the winter so that you can get a roadmap for your body for the upcoming year. That's really good advice. Thank you so much. This is Noreen with Mahalakshmi at uh, the Shivananda Yoga Farm in Grass Valley. Have a wonderful day. Oh, no.